Hey, this is OXDF, and in today's video, we are looking at the intentions box from Hack the Box, and specifically at the root step, where we're trying to move from the Greg user to root. Um, Greg has access to run a file called Scanner, and Scanner can take an MD5 of a file. It's a little bit broken. I go over that in the blog post. You can look at it. Um, but specifically, it can take the MD5 of the starting n bytes of a file. And so I can tell it I want it to only look at the first three bytes, or five bytes, or one byte. And what that allows me to do is basically read any file, because the scanner file has permissions to read any file on the system. It's got a capability that allows it to do that. And uh, therefore, I can basically read any file as root, because what I can do is I can say, give me the MD5 of the first byte of the file. And then I can take the MD5 hash of 256 different bytes and figure out which one matches the byte of that file. And now I know that one. I can say, okay, give me the MD5 of the first two bytes. And I can say, let's say it's, uh, you know, an A. Well, now I can say A plus what? Well, there's only 256 chances, so I'll try all 256 and I'll figure out what the next byte is. And I can use that to brute force. So in this video, we're going to write the script to brute force that, and uh, we are going to read files as root. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, here we are on the file system. Um, I've got this file op scanner scanner, and there's a, there's a good help here. Um, interestingly enough, it behaves kind of weird when you don't give it a uh, full uh, or a length to scan, but we're not going to bother with that. So we're going to do scanner here, and we can do something like um, minus c on. We'll start with a simple. We'll start with a simple um, on a file we can read, user dot text, uh, and then we will minus s, and that it's required, but it's not useful here. So we can just put whatever here, um, and then we need dash p because that's going to give us the uh, debug print, so we can see the calculated hash of the file and dash L, so if we want to see the first four bytes of user.txt, uh, it's got that hash. If I cat user.txt here, and I were to say, okay, here's four bytes, if I echo minus n, because I don't want a new line added, and I do that into md5sum, uh, we can see that this hash matches this hash. So we can see that we effectively are doing that. We, we, we can read the first four bytes that way. Um, sweet, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write a Python script. So we're gonna write bim like read file.py, and we will say, oh, we start with our user bin env python3. Uh, and then, let's see, we'll start, I'm going to start uh, with something I'll call like output equals uh, empty byte string. And then I'm going to say file name is equal to sys.argv1, so I can read arbitrary files. I'm going to need the sys module, so I'll import that here. And so that'll just be the first, the first argument in my script will be the file name. Um, so I'm going to do a loop here, I'll do while true. And the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get the hash of the next n bytes of the file. I will say, we're going to write, we'll say like target hash is equal to get hash of a uh, file name and then we, and a length. And we'll say that length is going to be the len of output plus one. So like right now, output is no bytes, so we want to get one byte and hash that. Um, and we're going to write this file in a lit. We can come up here, we can do def get hash on a file name and and we'll call it like n and for now we're, we're, we'll come back and write this but for now we can do it like a doc string that says uh get the md5 hash of the first n bytes of fn using the i already was going scanner executable Perfect. And now we can just leave that for now. We'll come back to it. Um, so once we have the hash we want to target, the next thing we need to do is we need to say, okay, using that hash, let's get the next byte. So we'll say um, next byte is equal to uh, get next byte. Well, I, mean, I guess it works, right? Uh, and we're going to need to pass it uh, the output, or what we call it, like the uh, yeah output that we have so far, and the target hash. So now we can come up here and say def get next byte, if I can spell, and it's going to take in, a, uh, I guess what's we'll called output for simplicity, and then we'll call this, um, and uh, no, uh, target. And again, we can just do say, um, brute force the next byte of a string until it matches target. Return none if no match. 
Sweet. Okay. So now we can say if uh, next byte. So if we found a if we found a match. Um, well, I guess we'll say if next byte is none, if we didn't find a match, we break. We're done with this loop. Otherwise, output plus equals next byte. And maybe we'll go ahead and print next byte end equals like that so that we don't, so there's no new line. And uh, let's give this a shot and see what happens. So we can run, um, let's see, we can do opt, oops, opt. Scanner, scanner, minus C. Oh, wait, I don't need, I'm like Python read file. I think I need Python 3 on this box. Uh, read file, and we'll do user.txt since that's a file we can already read, and we get nothing. Um, <laughs> that's a bummer. Uh, let's see, so we can try to troubleshoot here. Um, of course we had nothing. We didn't define these functions. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at the functions. So. Uh, getting the hash. We're going to use subprocess. We'll need to import that. Import subprocess. And subprocess can be kind of a pain, but um, it is kind of like the official the way you're, you're supposed to do it in Python, so we're going to use it. Um, we're going to do subprocess.run. We'll use an f string here to define our process. Um, and basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, opt scanner scanner minus c, and that's the file name, like that. And then we'll do minus s whatever, minus p minus l, oops, minus l on that n. And I think that's all we need. Now we are going to say dot split because run takes an array of strings. It doesn't, you don't put spaces in there. And that is meant to prevent you from getting like command execution and things like that. Um, here we'll just use split to split on the spaces and that'll work just fine. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to capture standard out and standard error. We'll come here a little bit and we will, let's see. Um, uh, that's good. Standard out equals uh, sub process dot type standard error equals uh, sub process dot type. So now when they're, when they're pipe, we're going to be able to deal with them. Um, now, I don't exactly know what that's going to look like, and I want to figure it out. So I'm going to use uh, PDB, the Python debugger, to figure it out. So we'll just for now like return one. And I'm going to note that I'm on line 12 here. Um, and so I can come down here and do minus M PDB. And then I'm going to give it a command, uh, which is break on line 12. And I'm going to give it another command, which is to run. And I run this. And so now, let's see. I am at this return one right here. Perfect. So I can do proc and see what proc is. And it's the completed process. Here's the args. Here's the return code. Uh, here's standard out. So we can do dot standard out. And we got that, perfect. We want to decode that to get it to a string. And we're trying to get this hash. So we want to strip it to get rid of that new line on the end. We want to split it to get just split it on space. And we want just that last one so we can do minus one. Like that and that is our hash. We'll grab this. We'll come up here, delete and paste that. And now I think we actually have what we want there. Okay, so for the getting the next byte, how are we going to handle that? Um, we need to, let's do a four I, ooh, let's see if I can type, four I in range 256, because basically each byte can have some value between one, zero and 255. Um, I could probably safely just go for ASCII, especially if I'm just reading text files here, um, but for completion, I'm gonna read any kind of, any byte. So I can say, uh, if target uh, is equal to, and I'm gonna need hash lib, I better go import this while well, I forget, import hash lib. Okay, Let's see. So if target equals hash lib dot md5 of, and what do I want to do? I'm going to do uh, output plus, I'm going to take the character of i, I'm going to encode that to make it into a byte, and that's done. And then I can do hex digest like that. So this is going to hash output and the character, and if that, and then give me a string hex digest, and if that matches the target, then I know I found the phi, I found the answer. I will return char of i dot encode. Cool. Now we're back in. We're in a much better position to actually try this now and see how it works. It's hanging and it spit out a bunch of junk. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm noticing right away, we are printing byte strings, and that's just ugly printing. So let's come down here 
and we will print next byte dot decode. I'm going to assume the bytes are all going to look kind of uh, ASCII-ish, although based on the all those null bytes, maybe they're not. Sweet, that looks good. Um, so we actually just read user.txt. Um, now we are crashing here. We're crashing when we try to get this process and we fail. Um, let's come up here and do, we can do int try. And now we can do accept uh, index error. And I'm going to do breakpoint here. So now when I hit that, I will get a debugger. And if we run here, we add our breakpoints. So let's look at, check what proc looks like. Um, proc.standard out. Uh, there is no standard out. Proc.standard error. Uh, we tried some sort of panic inside. The, so the file itself crashed. So we read pass into the file and it crashed. Um, what I want to do in this case really is just return none. Um, because what's going to happen now, if let's, we'll, we'll work this through, but if I return none, then target's going to be none. And when I get down here, I guess I'm going to, technically I'm going to brute force an extra, you know, whole bunch, but um, I guess we can come down here and say, uh, nah, let's just leave it. Because if I were, if target's none, we're going to run an extra 256 hashes. None of them are going to succeed because this is it. And we're going to return none and break out here. So it's kind of just, that'll work. Um, let's quit here and we will run this again and we get our answer. Um, if you're curious about all those null bytes that are stuck on the end, in fact, if we do this and we go to XXD, we can see um, there's a ton of null bytes on the end. Um, this is weird, and this is why uh, when I said at the beginning, it doesn't really MD5 hash the thing. It's, there's a weirdness to it. Um, I'm going to dig into that a little bit in my blog post and beyond root. I might even do a video on that, but um, we're not going to go into it here because it's not important for solving. Um, what we can do is we can come here and we can start to say like, okay, well, can we read uh, root uh, .ssh? Uh, ID RSA, and the answer is yes. You can see the the uh, private key here flowing by. Um, not too bad. We can read things like uh, at the shadow, and that's working as well. So we've got arbitrary file read by brute forcing with hashes. So um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will talk to you next time.